Would you like to build a powerful network of strong business and personal relationships? Then you're in the right place today. No one ever does it alone. In business and in our personal lives, our relationships play a very important role. It's been said that 85% of our success in life relies on our ability to get along with the greatest number of different types of people. And I can tell you, my greatest gifts are my relationships with amazing people from around the planet that I've associated with in business over the past 30 years. And, you know, when it's all said and done, all we'll really ever have are the people we lived and loved and laughed with anyway. Relationships are priceless. Our chat today is being brought to you by StreamYard. Put the power of live streaming to work for your business, your brand, or your cause. We're using StreamYard right now to deliver this program live. You can be a pro and stream live to Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and more. Go to StreamYardCause.com to sign up for your free account. That's StreamYardCause.com. My guest today knows connections and referral marketing at its core level and teaches companies how to build alliances with specific professionals through making strategic connections. He has spoken to audiences throughout the United States and internationally. His favorite aspect of business is providing directional leadership. He is also a number one best-selling contributing author on the Wall Street Journal bestsellers list with the book Masters of Success. My guest has partnered with Trustegrity as the U.S. National Connector. He is growing Trustegrity to expand globally. He is seeking influential leaders who want to make a significant impact in the form of giving back and connecting others. My guest is Dan Rawls. Hi, Dan. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me on, Cause. I appreciate it very much. You are very welcome. And tell us where you're at because... That looks a lot like Tennessee. So I am in uh, Teleco Lake in te East Tennessee. And it looks a little rainy today. It's just a little cloudy. We're 90 degrees is around the corner. Ah, Tennessee. What part of Tennessee specifically is that geographically? Uh, Knoxville, hundred about 150 miles from Nashville. Very good. And where are you from originally? So grew up in Atlanta, born in Tennessee, split time in Salt Lake. So kind of all three areas, really. I still say all y'all. You still say, OK, so let's do a little uh, Southern lesson to get things started this morning. So y'all is singular. Correct. Y'all is plural. That's right. Usins is a large group. Is that correct? Well, we say Ewins. You see, that's why we're having you do this little Southern speech class. That's right. And see, y'all say all y'all in Salt Lake say barbecue. We say grill out because barbecue is something you eat. Y'all think it's something you do. You have people over to the lake to grill out, not to barbecue. You eat barbecue, but you grill out barbecue. See the difference? That's and y'all and y'all don't know what grits are either. So bless your heart. It's okay. Oh, I love I love some good grits. Ab <laughs> ah, absolutely, I like some good grits. Absolutely, that is awesome. That's right. So barbecue is a noun, not a verb. That's correct. Very good. Well, amen. Absolutely, preach there that, you go. Lake County. Sweet. Now that we are all on the same page, let's talk about power networking. So how'd you get in the networking business, connecting people as a living? Well, I um, one thing I learned right out of college is I learned that you could meet you, 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 if you could meet people through groups, you could accomplish things faster than anything you could do on your own. And I have to tell you, as as you were doing the intro, literally no joke. I have chills all the way from my neck, all the way down to my waist, listening to your introduction. Not, not about me, but just the fact you're 85% statistic that you share that, you know, so many people, so many solopreneurs, they try to go at it alone. They try to have their own business. And, you know, something I learned in my twenties is that you can be in, in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And it's important to surround yourself with the right people to give you the right advice, the right connections, referrals, you build trust with people. And so I went to 
my first business meeting, if you will, in Atlanta, Georgia, right after college in uh, 19, January of 89. And I, I just got all excited. And, and um, I didn't pursue that particular group. I mean, I was, my pants were too short and I wasn't dressing professionally. And I, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't major in business in college. And, um, and then in March of 93, I went to a business group at a Marie Callender's on Fort Union. And um, it was not an impressive group at all. Um, it, in fact, it, I came this close to never pursuing it, but I, I knew there was something more. So I called the director that was in charge of that area. I said, hey, is there another group in town? And he said, yes. And so I went two days later to a different group. And instantly, as I wove my way to the back of the Marie Callender's private room, I could hear the buzz in the room. And I was literally filling out my application as they were starting the meeting because I, I just I just knew this was the right place for me because I'm a people person. I thrive on people. I thrive on um, group dynamics. It's really my toys are us. And so I, um, I became a member of that group. Um, I'm in the health and nutrition field. I've worked for a company out of Memphis, Tennessee called the juice plus company, which is a 50 year old company. And I've been with them for almost 32 years. And I know I don't look that old, but I'm dating myself, but that's okay. Um, and so I'm still part of that company. I'm a national marketing director with the Juice Plus company and very blessed. I've just gotten an education about meetings and group dynamics and people. And um, that was really my start in the world of networking when I attended this group, this business group. It was called The Network back then. And um, then I came back to the South at the end of that ski season in 94. And I started that company in seven states. I brought six leaders to the table in different states and we grew it really fast. And that was really, that's my journey. That's how I got started. Talk a little bit about finding the right audience because I'm a big proponent. And one of the reasons I wanted you on here today is you and I are like-minded in that I would rather spend an hour with 50 people and get that reach of 50 than one person at a time and spend 50 hours getting in front of 50 people. Also, if I get in, a, in front of a group of 50 people or like today, hundreds of people, that does more for one's credibility than a cold call trying to get in front of someone. So let's talk about finding the right audience, because I think developing a power network has everything to do with the audience that you're communicating with. Because if everyone just started their business yesterday and is with this mentality of gimme, 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 who's got leads, who's got leads, who's got leads, it's all about the leads, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, right? Where's the leads? Who's got the leads? Only as good as the leads. Everyone's desperate. Where you can talk about this specifically, you had a giver's mentality. And I believe that's the real key to networking is give, 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 and when there's an opportunity, then you can receive. Absolutely. And, and so you and I speak the same love language in business. I didn't realize that. Um, you know, the, the, the reality of it is um, that is my Toys R Us. You put me in a chamber after hours event. You put me in a business mixer. You put me in a business environment. Like I'm bouncing all over the walls and people are grabbing my arm to introduce me to other people. And, 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 and I've been doing that for over a quarter of a century. So I say that humbly because in my personal life, I'm very shy. Um, exact opposite. Um, you know, in, in church, I sit in the back five rows. I go to um, just a barbecue that's a social barbecue and I don't really know anybody, but maybe other than the person that invited me, I'm very quiet and shy. But a business environment, completely you different. Grill out. You go to a grill out, not a barbecue, but you eat. <laughs> I stand corrected. Absolutely. Thanks for being teachable. <laughs> um, but so, so you're right. I, I feel like for me, I mean, I've watched some of your shows and I think it's important. I want to tell the world how you and I met, but I've, I've learned so much from you just in my short season of getting to know you in the last, call it five months when I first called you. Um, but to me, it's the masses. It's not like I'm not a one on one coach. I don't I don't want to really sit down with one person individually. There's dozens of people that feel like I should get into the coaching world. 
Um, that's not my calling. That's not my gift. My gift is this. And if you're taking notes, remember a short pencil is better than a long memory. Jot down a few things during this session today. And the first one is um, that when it, when it comes to networking and, and meeting people, this is a good question to ask. Who do you need to meet through me? Because all I am is a conduit. And oftentimes people will come to me and they're looking for a new career. Every month, someone texts or calls or voice message or something communicates with me and says, hey, I'm really looking for a career change. I know you know a lot of people. There's a gal on Facebook, never even met her before. We've been connected for a couple of years. She's been looking for over a year. And she sent me a message about 60 days ago and said, hey, I just want to thank you. You gave me that introduction and I've landed a new job. Thank you very much. Okay, well... Tell me more specifically how I can help you, because what we have is we have wandering generalities versus determined specifics. And I did not invent that phrase. I learned it many years ago. But so many people are just wandering aimlessly, going to events, going to mixers, going to networking meetings. And they're just kind of wandering aimlessly, throwing some mud against the wall, hoping some of it's going to stick. And, and they don't really have a purpose. So th this, this, would, this could be a goal. The next time you go to a business event, my suggestion to you would be this. Take five business cards, not a pocket or purse full. Take five. If five is too much, take three. Take three business cards and say to yourself, I am not leaving this event until I have exchanged business cards with three strangers whom I have not met yet. And the best introduction, the best way to do that is to ask someone if they could introduce you. Hey, you see that man over there in that gray suit? I'd love to meet him. I've seen him somewhere before. Who is that? Case in point, yesterday on LinkedIn, I messaged about 40 people individually to reconnect with people from my past. And there was mutual connections of someone. I saw this gal that was in some type of leadership in our community. And so I messaged someone that I've known for 30 years on text. And I said, hey, do you know so-and-so? And she said, yes, I do. I said, you know, I started to message her. We're actually LinkedIn connections, first level connections, but I don't know her. Could you do me a favor and arrange that introduction for us? And here's why I do that, because I learned from the founder of my company many years ago in the late 80s and early 90s. This is what he taught us as leaders. The power of two people to influence a third person is so much stronger than one on one selling or one on one marketing. And that's where a lot of solopreneurs and business owners, they struggle. It's not that they get it all wrong, but they're trying to go at this alone because I'm an independent self-starter. I don't need people. I can do this by myself. Well, great. You already said that 85% of success comes from the people around you and your network. So that would be my advice to, to the world of... Team up with someone. Everybody needs an amener, if you will. Everybody needs a buddy that they can run with. And so for me, if I say, who do you need to meet through me? There, there's a tool that you have on this right here on your cell phone. It's called three-way calling. Folks, I have literally probably done in excess of 2,000 three-way calls in my career of three decades. Uh, I introduce people all the time. It could be a two-minute call, a five-minute call, a 20-minute call, but amazing things happen on three-way phone calls. You know, a three-way text is okay. A three-way WhatsApp is okay. Voxer, Facebook Messenger, however you do that. But for me personally, it's robbery, like for you and your voice. I mean, you're a coach. You're, you're, you do all these podcasts. So... For me to do a three-way text introduction for you, I think that's robbery because people love your voice. They love your enthusiasm. And that text will never replace the value of the spoken word, if that makes sense. So three-way calling would be an amazing tool. If you'll start using it more, you'll see better results with your introductions and connections. Well, and that brings up an important point because people want those connections, right? And... uh if, if you think about it as far as like a thermometer from a, there's a reason something's called a cold call <laughs> in trying to reach out to someone because it's, it's freaking frigid, man. It's frozen, right? It's, it's, it should be called an ice cold call. There's no connection. The, the hottest on the thermometer would be a referral, right? Those people are, right. all, those people are all, you know, there are no barriers. There are no obstacles to the sale or the relationship because 
it's built on that mutual relationship with the referrer to the referee. But below that is introductions and then connections. And I don't believe we're really using the power of introductions and connections. So I love what you're saying, because if we can't get enough referrals to be successful in our business, the next level to that is introductions, to your point. And I think people believe that networking is, again, back to that philosophy of gimme, 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 instead of who can I connect other people with? And if you're the person that's the master connector that I referred you as, if someone's a master connector and you're connecting this person and this person, right? You meet somebody and they say, yeah, I build pools. And you say, awesome. My friend, my friend Randy is actually looking at building a pool this summer. You should get a hold of my friend Randy and connect people. And if you're giving, giving, giving in those connections and in introductions, if you will, those will come back tenfold. But you can't start with, do you have a lead for me? Because I think that that just smells of desperation. It smells of sales where the law of reciprocity says just give, 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 and you'll get enough back. Right. And we call <laughs> something I learned over a decade ago is that that concept right there is called needy is creepy. That someone, you, you know, they're just they're, they're, they're needy. I mean, we all have needs. We all have our struggles. And it, it's just almost in a sense, it's creepy. And you just never know where your next introduction could come from. And so if you're taking notes, I would encourage you to write this down. One person, ladies and gentlemen, could literally change the face of your business, the trajectory of your company and your business. One introduction could change the face of that. There's an executive coach that I know up in the Ogden area. And um, I've only seen him three or four times in my life. Very impressed with him. Just super professional. I introduced him to a trust integrity group in his area. Um, I called him two or three times over about a five month period. He went to the, to the meeting, he plugged in, he's become a member of our network and he left me a personal voicemail and said, Dan, thank you for your persistence with me. I'm blown away at the quality of the people that you all attract at Trustegrity. And you know what? My first referral, my first connection has paid my dues for over six years to your organization. And if it wasn't for you, doing that, I wouldn't have this power association. So you're exactly right. But, you know, there's another phrase that I learned in a book called Business Networking and Sex. I know the authors of that book. Um, it's not what you think. It's about the genders and how they connect and network differently. <laughs> and one of the chapters is called Premature Solicitation. And she talks in that book that sometimes people will meet someone in an event and they'll follow up the next day or two days later and just they want them to open their their book of contacts, their Rolodex, if you will, I'm dating myself there, but just their connections and people that they hold close to their chest. Hey, I'm looking for this or that. Like we just met, <laughs> relax. I don't even know you. And so you have to build that trust up with someone to figure out, is it somebody, we call it the mother test. I want to give you a few introductions before I would refer you to my mom or to my wife or girlfriend or to my daughter to buy a car, something like that. And so uh, that's what a lot of people don't get, that, that they go to an event to get, 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 get. And if you'll start going to events, this is my goal. My goal is to make one connection at every event I go to. If I make more than one, that's great. But for me, I want to make one connection for myself. And as a result, I'm going to work the room and I'm going to learn how to make other connections for other people. And what am I going to say? Who do you need to meet through me? There's a book many years ago lit, written by a lady um, named Susan Roan from San Francisco. I had the opportunity to meet her about eight years ago. And uh, she wrote the book on how to work a room. I still had her audio cassette when I met her. And I ran up to her after she spoke and I said, your cassette changed my world to work a room because I'm an introvert. Personally, I'm an introvert. We call that a situational introvert. Depends on the environment that you're in. I already shared that with you, the difference between personal or business for me. So you're exactly right. So many people go in with this take, take, take mentality. 
it, it is about serving people. And, and I just want to tell the world quickly how you and I met. You were, do you remember how we met? If I remember correctly, I was down in Cozumel. Uh, yes, sir. Scuba diving, and you reached out on Facebook and said, oh, I love Cozumel. And if you're going to go scuba diving, you've got to talk to this guy. And you introduced me to uh, a scuba captain. If right. I that's exactly it. That's, a, that's a good memory. I was just checking to see because of all the people in your network and your sphere. So, World, that's how he and I met. It's an amazing story. We've never met. We've never had a conversation. I saw he was posting something in January. There's, you know, snow on the ground. I was going skiing that day and he's in Mexico. And I was like, wow, like, I wish I could be there with you. And so we connected on WhatsApp and I sent him a couple messages and the dive master. I said, I've been there. I've got personal friends that live there that I've known for, you know, 40 years. Was that a business connection? Did that have anything to do with business? No. And five months later, you invite me to be on your show. Folks, you never know where one connection can lead. And that's the whole point. So many people are focused on business, 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 business. And then COVID hit and we still haven't had a chance to high five and hug and meet in person. But I know that day is coming that we will this winter probably. But you just never know where one connection can come from. I could tell you dozens of stories of people that I have introduced to each other. And those people today still have a residual income in their own business, mortgage, real estate, carpentry business, construction, business coaching, all types of businesses because of an introduction that I gave them. Literally, and, it's, and part of that was our structure of another company I was with for 25 years. But through that organization, I helped hundreds and hundreds of people make connections that those people still get paid every single month from the connections that they've made. And I, I don't know if you can tell by the tone of my voice, but I'm, I just get white hot passionate about it. I had the most amazing phone conversation yesterday. Someone called me that was connected that saw a comment on Facebook. And I'm literally humbled by this. And this, this gal, she actually built an incredible business and was able to retire and sell her business. And I'm just, I'm just in awe at the story and, and I'm like, how did, how did you even send me a friend request? How did we meet? Well, you commented on so-and-so's post. And I mean, I was just blown away by the conversation. This person just oozes with credibility, has national presence, built an incredible business, sold the business, retired, very influential with children, adults in the fitness world, just amazing around dance. One call, your Facebook post, my Facebook comment. That's how I use social media to pay attention and, and really stand out from everybody else. Here's a question that comes from Billy Mandarino in Santa Barbara. He says, hi, Dan. Do networking styles vary with different types of business? I'm a spiritual teacher. Do you have any tips? So networking styles can vary with different types of businesses um, from what I see. Um, you know, an architect might network a little bit differently than a builder, than um, an executive business coach, an accountant, an attorney, than a real estate agent. And we all speak the language of networking and referrals. Some are better at it than others. <clears throat> when I first started in this, I went to my first two business meetings. I couldn't network my way out of a brown paper bag. I didn't, I didn't even really know how to spell the word networking, much less business. And um, the question popped off the screen, but in your world um, with what you do of being a spiritual teacher, I don't have any tips per se. You can connect with me offline and I can, we can just kind of share some ideas back and forth and I'll just give my knowledge to you and maybe something that would help you. But the point is start somewhere. The point is, um, align yourself with the right people. And, and, and I'll just give a quick plug for Trustegrity. If you do business locally, find a Trustegrity group in your area. If there's not one, start one. There wasn't one where I lived, so I started one, uh, a, a business group back in 1994. There wasn't a Trustegrity group, so I started one six months ago here. Um, and so the second thing is we have a national guest event 
that happens every other Friday. It's a way for you to check us out. If you do business regionally, wherever you are, or nationally, we have regional groups and we have national groups in addition to local groups. So um, that could be an option for you. But, uh, you know, it's become a student of the art. If you, if you really have an interest in learning um, how to do this thing called networking, how to do this thing called connecting, and just connecting with people at a deeper level in a confidential environment. That's really what we're all about. Maybe that would help you. Let's see. It says, uh, TJ says, Dan, like me, create a cheerleading concept where connecting and cheerleading for others is the key. Do that for others and you will find it comes back with bigger energy. I would agree with that. And then uh, Billy says to you, Dan, thank you. Thank you very much for answering his question. I'm sure Billy will will reach out to you as well. So let's back up a little bit because you've been doing this a long time. You've obviously learned from various experiences. And I know some of our viewers or listeners may have actually gone to a BNI group. Tell us your history with BNI. And for those who don't know what it is, what is it and what would you learn from that specifically? What have you learned from that experience in building networking groups around the country? So um, the company used to be called The Network and it was in 12 states. And that was um, when I went to that meeting in Salt Lake in December of 93. And I saw a bigger vision. I saw a bigger picture. I started the organization in Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, Charlotte, Birmingham, Nebraska, Boston, St. Louis. I started it by bringing leaders to, to the plate that I knew could do this and they could influence people fast. And um, we became some of the fastest growing regions in the history of the world. And, um, you know, I, I, I still wear the T-shirt and wave the flag for that company. I was part of that organization for 25 years and um, stepped away uh, in 2017. And um, for, for me, um, it, it's influenced a lot of people. It's uh, helped a lot of small business, a lot of new business. It helped saw people through two different recessions. Um, so I would say that that organization comes up in 80% of my conversations because it was half my life. Um, you know, I, I influenced a lot of people. We were in the ground floor in the basement pushing dirt. And um, then then something turned in 2019 a friend of mine david alexander called me about this company called trustegrity that he found and he lives in atlanta he actually took over bni in atlanta where i started it in 95 and he took it over in 99 and um, became in the top 10 in the world and he said hey i found this company and i bought the company called trustegrity and and so so i would say this if you're looking for higher connections with deeper relationships and a smaller group with higher connectivity, if you will, where you can be vulnerable and you can participate. That's what we do. I, I learned six weeks ago from a gal in Salt Lake who I've known for a decade. She owns a very successful real estate company. And she attended one of our meetings as a guest that somebody else invited. And she said, what impressed me most about this Trustegrity meeting and I host a networking group in my office. I've been president of it two or three times in 10 years. She said, for the first time in my life here in this Trustegrity meeting, I experienced two things. Number one is I got to be in participation mode with everybody at the table versus presentation mode. And the second thing is I shared something very deep and personal and vulnerable and I felt like it was a safe place, a safe environment to do it. And so for me, I just, I just love that environment because, you know, we, we, we live in a world of artificialness. We live in a world where people throw out the word transparent and authentic. And, and it's so funny because sometimes if I'm in a tough spot and I call someone, sometimes those people don't even reach back out to me because I mean, I have personal needs too. I have struggles too that I deal with. And, and that's when you bring the right thought leaders together in a business environment that if you're struggling with something and you really want to connect at a deeper core level, that's what we do. That's, that, that is our environment. In fact, everything that's said at our events 
is held in strictest confidence and people are drawn to that and they're attracted to that. And that goes back to your comment about you'd rather speak to a group of 50. So would I, because the bigger the audience, the better I do. I have no idea how many people are watching this right now. But if we were in person and there was 5,400 of you, I can assure you, I would be delivering much more passionate enthusiasm with 5,400 than 54 or than five. But that, it just fuels my fire and gets me excited. But there's a time and a place where it comes in your business. If you're looking for, and you've gotten to a certain level of your business, that you're looking for something deeper, something to stimulate you a little bit more, something to make you think on your feet. That's why the culture of trust integrity, it's going to be a household name with executive business owners and leaders. Well, will it help you visualize then that by the time this goes from Facebook Live on a couple of channels to YouTube to the Cause Green Audio Experience podcast, you'll be in in front of thousands of people. So bring your energy, Dan. <laughs> it's not just you and me. It's thousands. Maybe you can go like this a little bit, just above that. Look over that. Look over the fence there. Otherwise, you look okay. like Wilson. <laughs> Wilson, okay. home improvement. There you go. Uh, Charmaine Hallett down in Albuquerque says, B&I is different in small cities. Ours is run proper and can be a huge asset to your networking. I was trained by the best to be my best. Thank you, Cause. B&I is a must when you open a new business and want to build your brand. It's a wonderful trust circle. So I want to go back to a key concept, and that is know your audience. Know your audience because let's we'll talk about trust integrity in a second. Because what I believe that really is is a more of a mastermind alliance as opposed to just a networking group. So a lot of people will join a chamber of commerce or Rotary or Kiwanis or something like that, and they they just become a name on a roster. And I want to caution against that. Don't just be a name on a roster somewhere. What you want to do is serve. You want to be part of an organization. So let's say you were in a chamber of commerce and there's 400 members, right? And, and, and the, same, the same 15 people show up every month. So you're going to get to know those 15. But instead of just being a name on a roster and showing up to a mix and mingle once a month and hand out business cards, get on a task force. Get on a subcommittee for the summer grill out where they're going to serve some great barbecue. Maybe it's a fundraiser and be part of that group of four or five and just serve and show people who you are and what you do. Because then people will say, gosh, dang, what, what is it that Dan Rawls does? Because I'll tell you what, if he does his profession, like he worked on that fundraiser or that summer grill out, I would want a person like that in my corner. So you're always auditioning. You're always proving yourself. So don't just be a name on a roster. And I've attended some BNI meetings. And what I felt, because maybe they weren't the ones like uh, Charmaine was at, is they really were just all brand new businesses. And everyone had the philosophy of, I'm here for the leads. So if you're a more experienced networker, please listen to what we're saying that you're a connector of people. So for those just joining us, Dan, what is that magical phrase again in networking? How did you say it? Who do you need to meet through me? Who can I introduce you to? See, that is where it starts and then serve. I believe you have to have a, a servant's heart to be really good at networking. So yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I want to say, I want to say something too about, um, the concept of that people just go into meetings and, you know, I don't want to make this about the other company because I'm not part of that other company anymore, but I still tell people about it, you know, and there's a time and a place. Um, but you know, with what we do, sometimes people don't have the confidence to refer someone or introduce someone to somebody else, um, because they are new in their career. I mean, let's face it, everybody has to start somewhere. But if you want to sell your house, you're not going to call your aunt who's been selling real estate for nine months. You, you love your aunt, but you want your house sold, right? You want an experienced person that can get the job done lightning fast. That's what you want. And 
you know, same thing with financial planning. If someone just got into the business and they're 43 years old, there's no disrespect meant, but for some people are like, that's my nest egg. That's my retirement. I'm not going to put that in the hands of someone that's brand new. Our average tenure and membership in trust equity is 15 years. So there's a both and relationship, you know, also our company, we don't have any rules and people love that. And I can tell you this, I've coached and spoken in front of um, David says it's probably upwards of 20,000 people. Okay, great. So one of the things I found out over a couple of decades of doing that is that entrepreneurs despise being told what to do, but they, they need directional leadership. You see entrepreneurs need directional leadership of someone that can advise them in the right steps, coach them in the right manner. As you've said it three times now, make the right connections with the right advice. And that's what we do. Connect, confide, collaborate, a trust integrity. And so, you know, there is a balance there. It's not just going to a networking meeting, but every little thing you do creates trust. If you're late, it creates trust. It creates distrust. If you're on your phone texting, what do you think that does? See, and, and, and we forget that they're called human behaviors. I think every college should teach business manners 101. We just assume that everybody knows that. But I can tell you this, I've been going to meetings for so long, we never even had these. People had those Motorola flip phones and they put them in their purse or their pocket. Even before that, I've been going to meetings since we had audio cassette players in our car. We didn't have, if you were pretty wealthy, if you had a cell phone. And we, we function just fine without those. But Susan Roan in her book, How to Work a Room, she talks about that. She calls it text rude. Oh, excuse me just a second. I have to answer this text. That's called text rude. <laughs> and she called it, instead of call waiting, she called it call rude. Oh, excuse me. This other person's more important than you. Can I put you on hold for a minute, cause? It's just that I, I need to talk to them. And those things affect your trust and your credibility. And, you know, I, don't, I could teach a whole day seminar on that, but. Well, you, you well know. we value whatever we pay attention to. I mean, here's the reality. The reality is this. You'll never master anything in your life. My dancer friend that called me, that's a professional dancer. She's always looking to get better. You're always looking to get better as a vocal coach with what you do. Whatever your craft is in your profession, you'll never master anything. And here's why I know that. Go try water skiing, snow skiing, wakeboarding, wake surfing, um, hang gliding, um, rappelling, rock climbing. You'll never master that. No one ever masters any of those things. And so the reality of it is we can call ourselves a connector. We can call ourselves a, a, a networker but nobody will ever master anything. That's just my personal opinion. There's a lot of books on masters of networking and masters of this and masters of that. But the reality of it is I'm still in freshman orientation, friend. 30 years later, I'm still learning my craft. I like and that. so follow up. That's music to my ears. Talk like, to me. Lit literally again, when, when you said follow up and you said hold your horses, I got chills all over again because this is where most people blow it. And for me, I've used ACT, I've used Goldmine, I've used Outlook, I have Gmail contacts. Um, you know, for, for me, they say you can only manage X number of business relationships at one time, and I understand that. But there are people, there's, there's a handful of people that constantly call me, they're like, get together, they don't return phone calls, but yet I'll see them on Facebook commenting, commenting on people's posts or LinkedIn or whatever, and it's just like, Dude, you still owe me a phone call from three months ago. And it's just, it, it literally cracks me up because you said people invest time and spend time where they value those relationships. The fortune is in the follow-up. And I learned that a long, long time ago. That is not my phrase. So where the fortune is in the follow-up is, is not just financial. The fortune is in the follow-up of growing a network, gaining a customer client or patient in your practice, in your business. Um, follow up with what you say you're going to do. Now, we all drop the ball. Um, some people drop the ball more than others. Some don't drop the ball very much. They dribble the ball. But the point is, I say this, because since pandemic hit, go back through your phone, go back through your text messages, go back through your Kingdom Organizer Day Runner, your day planner, however you keep track your Google Calendar. 
and get a pen and a paper and write down everybody that you played email, phone, or text, or LinkedIn, or Facebook Messenger tag with, I guarantee you by Friday, you'll have 10 people to follow up with and have a conversation. And we just get so busy and focused on the now, what's right in front of us, that we miss those opportunities. And so um, what's the best follow-up method? What would you say is the best follow-up method? Cause what would you say? Now you're going to put me on the spot. Well, I would say the best follow-up method, not looking for the right answer. I'm just going to share with you what my heart tells me right now is... How do you follow up? What's your best method? Well, I try to understand who I'm following up with and communicate with them the way they want to be communicated with, right? Some people are emailers. Some people are phone. Some people are face-to-face. I, I think it goes back to know your audience, but Sherry. Your- know your audience. So, so, so pick one. The best follow-up method is the one you'll do. That's the best. <laughs> All right. You're, you're right. You got me on that one. I mean, it's That's just like right. the best diet or exercise program or nutrition program. You should use mine, but it's really the best, the one that you'll go do. See, but I, I people li- it. <laughs> but people live in this world of someday I'll. Someday I'll follow up with those. I have a stack on my counter right now, my desk. I have a stack of business cards that's been in a manila envelope since December. Okay. I came back to the South and I'm going through those cards and I'm making phone calls and I'm reaching out to those people. And it's just, it's just a reconnection. I'm not soliciting. I'm not pitching. I'm not selling. It's just a reconnection message and just follow up with people. And so many people drop the ball when it comes to follow up. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like, you go to a business event, okay? Put yourself in this mindset. How many of you have ever been to Lowe's or Home Depot and you had to fix two or three things around your house? And you go and you get the stuff, the screws and the drill bits and this and the drywall, whatever. And you're like, I'm going to fix this. And it sits in your garage for six months. Listen, take it back. Call a handyman because you're not going to do it. Well, how would you go to a business event in Minnesota with cause? Well, how would you go to a networking event and you tell yourself you're going to follow up with people and you never follow up with people. And the longer the card sits there in your purse or on your desk, eventually you're like, ah, it's been a year and you throw it away. They won't really remember me. That's where, and we all drop the ball there. I get that. I understand that. But for me, I go to a business event to make one or two connections for myself personally. And then one or two connections for people in trustegrity, people that I know, part of my network. The other thing is, picking the method to follow up. For me personally, I use LinkedIn. I'm starting to use LinkedIn a little bit more. Um, They give me a built-in follow-up method. It's called birthdays. I don't message people on their birthday, but it's a great way for me to reconnect with someone a day or two or three after their birthday if I hadn't talked to them in five to eight years. And I can just reach out. I'm not selling them anything. I schedule a 10-minute phone call with them. And so many people, people are just tired of being sold and just like, People want me to buy their stuff and be a reseller for their programs. I'm laser focused with what I'm doing. I'm part of Trustegrity. I work for Juice Plus. That's all I want to do. I don't want to do anything else. That's my network. That's the people. That's who I serve. I serve people with their health and their connections. And and the last thing I wanted to say um, as you do your wrap up is um, referrals and connections. I actually went on a mastermind cruise a year ago with 80 entrepreneurs. And I talked about, they asked me to be an impromptu speaker the very last day. I was pretty blessed by that. And I recorded it. So if you're interested in seeing it, let me know. It's a 20 minute talk, but it talks about connections, the value of connections. There's a big difference in connections and referrals. And you see, why do I have authority to speak to that? Because I taught referral marketing for 25 years out of that world for three years now. I personally believe that connections can pay bigger dividends than referrals. Referrals are transactional. Referrals, yes, they can create a residual income from a customer base, but who do you need to meet through me or cause? If you're willing to build a trusting relationship with us, we're passionate about this thing called networking. He doesn't even know me and he asked me to be on his show Like, I'm deeply humbled by that. You have no idea that I'm honored to be one of his audience to share with you. And so think about connections. 
you can easily connect with people from your past. It's really not that hard to do between your Facebook, your Gmail contacts, your phone, your paper day planner, sticky notes. Go back and follow up with people that you met at that chamber event in 2017. I promise you, people are going to be excited. You pick up the phone. I know it was August 13th in downtown Salt Lake at the Greater Salt Lake Chamber, but I just wanted to call and reconnect with you. Like, who's going to blow you off and not appreciate the fact that you reached out? Sure, you dropped the ball, but you know what? Most people don't follow up in general anyway, and I've taught my son that for five or six years. He's come to trade shows with me, expos with me, chamber after hours events with me, and I tell him, I'm like, most people don't ever follow up. And they don't. They'll spend $5,000 and have a booth at an expo and get all these leads and these cards. 90 plus percent of trade show exhibitors, business expo exhibitors, never follow up with me ever. Blows me away. Because they're just looking for the low lying fruit. They want the one who's dipped, spayed, neutered, ready to go right now. And at any given moment, there's only about 3% of folks who are today's buyers, so to speak. It's the 97% who are going to use your product or service in the future, but you don't have the top of mind awareness because you haven't followed up. So so, so so, on that note, yeah, I've, I've got to say this because you just triggered in my head. So this is what I taught for years, okay? Stop, if you have a business and you're looking to acquire customers, clients, um, patients, whatever, stop looking at people with the word prospect written with a red Sharpie pen across their forehead and all caps, bold letters, prospect. What you do is you change that in your own mindset to connection source. This person could connect me to the low hanging fruit versus the, the, the expo exhibitor that maybe I'm not interested in buying solar from a house, but you know what? I know the bill and contractors, Duh. But if they're not willing to take the time to get to know me, they're never going to figure that out. And when people realize that you're a community problem solver and you can be a conduit for other people, amazing things will ensue. They'll happen for you. So I hope that makes sense. Oh, it, it, it absolutely makes sense. And I get kind of excited about it. I hope see, you can tell there, that. There's the energy that I knew that, uh, <laughs> that Dan would bring to the party. Absolutely. I think this is so important. Let's talk for a minute as we start to uh, head towards the finish line of our time together. With COVID-19, though, a lot of face-to-face -face group networking opportunities, I wouldn't say they've gone away, but they've certainly been dialed way down. What's your philosophy around reaching out to people on LinkedIn? Because I think LinkedIn is a good resource but it's a tool. It's not the answer. It's an answer. It's a resource, not the resource. Give us your philosophy around virtual connecting, like through LinkedIn. So, so virtual connecting, I, you know, it goes back to just my, the value of the spoken word. And some of y'all like that. I say all y'all. And so sometimes I use that to my advantage, depending on my audience and where I'm going. But I'm a Southern gentleman. It's just how I was raised. It's just a thing for me. But people, you know, I love my British friends and my Australian friends and business acquaintances. And um, someone from France messaged me on WhatsApp this morning and it was an eight minute voice message and we were connecting. So for me, I use the audio feature of LinkedIn message and also Facebook Messenger and also WhatsApp because um, they can hear my enthusiasm. They can hear my passion just to reconnect with someone and so many people are like, whoa, that's a great feature. I didn't even know you could do that. Um, and it, it just shows who you are and your passion and enthusiasm for wanting to reconnect with them. But virtually, um, some of y'all know that song, All I Want to Do is Zoom a Zoom. <laughs> you know, I've seen a funny little skit on that on uh, LinkedIn. But, you know, uh, the last thing some people want to do is another Zoom meeting. I just go old school, you know? I mean, I don't think that there's, I don't think we have to do everything via Zoom. If I'm gonna do a three-way introduction, I'll still be old school and make a three-way phone call. Um, so virtual connecting, there is a time and a place for Zoom meetings. I think if, you know, unless it's like a structured organization, um, if you're just doing an intro or a short meeting, I think Zoom is fine, but there's nothing wrong with talking on the phone. Well, I guess that's what um, I meant was like LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, that that virtual part of it. 
as opposed to I haven't been to very many networking lunches recently. I guess that's my. That's point. right. Well, actually, Instagram to too. Face to face. They all have the audio. They all have the audio feature in their messaging now to message people, and I get good results with that. And I mean, I don't. I mean, what's good results? I mean, if they respond and they like it and put the smile on their face, to me, that's that's. No response is a response. If someone responds favorably, they just love the value of the spoken word because it's you're either blending in with everybody else, like old school texting. And I joke with people that want to be serial texters and, you know, texting is so 80s. That's just what, how I feel about it. There's a time and a place for the voice message to message people. I mean, I've, I've gotten hundreds of people on Voxer and WhatsApp because it's how I like to communicate. And some of them hated me for six months and now it's a huge time management. Those two tools reduced my email 80% in the first two years I used them. Wow. There you go. And and then they know it's not canned, right? And I believe that's exactly the, right. The power of video. Where where appropriate, even if you have a, a, a face like this, and you know, this was, you know, after the accident. Um Video goes that much further too. I believe in audio. I would also suggest where appropriate and based on the technology, can you send a video message? So if you are going to text somebody, it's just as e it's easy just as easy to hit record and talk for 20 seconds than sit there and, you know, with your opposable thumbs and try to text something that sounds good. Just hit record and either audio or video and just talk to people. It makes a huge difference. Absolutely. I mean, it's just, again, pick the one you'll do, do it, try it, fix it, try it three ways this way. If it doesn't work, try the, I mean, the, no one's ever going to master it and you have to meet people where they are. When people used to send me a LinkedIn message eight years ago, I'd say, Hey, could you, could you just funnel to my email? Cause that's how I like to communicate. And this is what I learned over time. You've got to communicate the way people learn to, they like to communicate <laughs> except for me. Texting is just laborious for me. It's just so boring for me. And so for the serial texters out there, bless your heart. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but that's just not my love language in business. It's just, it's difficult for me. That's awesome. I'd rather leave eight voice messages on WhatsApp for 30 seconds than send 16 text messages back and forth. There's a time and a place, but I think this used to be sacred. Yes or no, right? I don't even have my cell phone on my business card. I've never, ever had my cell phone on my business card. Hmm. Correction. My new business card has my cell phone. It's the first time I've ever put my cell phone on my business card in business ever because Jim Rohn taught me many years ago, learn how to stay out of reach, but in touch. Hmm. And, and that's just, you know, texting has become what email was 10 years ago. There's no respect. There's no sacred place here. People just feel like they can text whenever and how much ever in paragraphs. And it's anyway, I don't want to get on a rant about that because there is a time and a place to connect with people. Um, I use on my droid. I use the voice. There's a voice feature in the text message. So sometimes I'll just call it pattern interrupt. If someone's sending long text messages back and forth, I'll leave them a 90 second voice message. And then, then the conversation's over because I've addressed all their issues. Well, yeah, and texting is that way, right? I mean, it's the telegraph. We got to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Where that's right. I'm old school too. Just pick up the phone and have a two minute conversation, and you'll get. And who wouldn't want to hear your voice, man? Come on, you've got the best voice ever. Oh, you're very kind. You do. We're 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 all in the same boat. Where we're like, I wish my voice was just a little bit different. We're we're all in that boat together. We all hear ourselves differently. Hey, let's uh, let's just conclude with this because I think this is really what we're saying is it's the platinum rule. And for our viewers or listeners who've maybe never heard of it, they've heard of the golden rule, which of course says do unto others as you'd have others do to you. But in business, if we can elevate ourselves to the higher law, which is the platinum rule that says do unto others as they would have done to them. Right. We, we, we seem to treat people the way we want to be treated. But if we really know our audience, we know how they like to be communicated with. We know what's important to them. And then we communicate to them based on what's important to them. We'll get so much further. And also to summarize, I would agree. We all have so many filters right now because the average American is seeing anywhere from five to ten thousand commercial messages a day. 
do not call me and try to sell me something. I'm surprised even on LinkedIn how many initial cold emails I get or messages just saying, hey, I want to sell you something. I don't even respond because I'm like, you have not earned the right to have this conversation with me. We we need yeah, to, this, we this need guy to dance just a sent, little bit. Can we dance yeah, a little it's, bit? Yeah, it's like figure out. That's exactly right. This guy sent me two messages on LinkedIn last week. And he said, hey, I, I endorsed you for some of your skills. Could you do the same for me? I've never even met the guy. I mean, it just it, it, that just doesn't even compute in my brain that he wants me to endorse him. So all of his readers and his followers, I'm putting my credibility on the line by that because people follow me because they trust me with what I do and how I help and serve them. I don't even know the guy. I mean, logically, that makes no sense at all. Maybe I'm in left field, but that's crazy. It's kind of like you do business with people you like, know, and trust. Well, you have to like someone before you want to get to know them. You have to want to get to know them before you can trust them. So if that makes sense to you, um, you're exactly right. People being all salesy on social media, it doesn't work. But some people feel like they can just blitz the world and be a wandering generality versus a determined specific. I, you know what? I don't want that response rate of 0.00001%. It's about quality not just quantity of relationships. Absolutely. I, would, I would much rather have a handful of deep relationships in my world of connections than 10,000 of, you know, also ran type relationships. So tell us a little bit more about Trustegrity and how people can find out more about what you're doing specifically in a city near them. So um, Trustegrity, you can go to just the website there. Uh, it shows you all of our states and groups locally that are listed. We don't have the national or regional groups that are listed there because those are obviously on Zoom. And so you could connect with me directly through my email address, dan at trustegrity.com that um, was just shown on the screen. And, um, you know, I'm easily accessible. Follow me on social media. I post things of value. Um, you know, if, if you're looking for something at a higher level, if you're looking to connect, confide and collaborate with people that um, you want to rub shoulders with, I, you know, for me, I always felt like I was never good enough to go into the Delta Sky Club. I never felt like I could really, unless I got upgraded, I never really felt like I was good enough to sit in Comfort Plus in first class. It was just a different clientele. And now I'm leading an organization in regions where I'm actually attracting and recruiting and building first class passengers and comfort plus passengers and the sky club passengers, if you will, um, people that are seasoned in business. And, and I also remember back when I first got started, I used to talk to anybody. If you could fog a mirror, I would talk to you. And I've learned over time, I'm not just so quick to just jump and go have a meeting at Starbucks with someone. You know, what's the purpose of the meeting? What's the perp what's the intent of the meeting? What do you hope to gain from the meeting? I mean, I'm all about face to face and meeting somebody, but you know, he just that's just how I roll. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'll, when you're ready to close out, I'll give one awesome tip that will carry you through the rest of your life and business with connections. It's just something that I do myself. Oh, wait, wait, um, but I, trust integrity. Find a group. It. If you do business nationally, we have national trust integrity groups that are forming and we only meet once a month. So that's another thing. Our meetings are two hours and um, what you share and participate just attend one of our guest meetings. Just reach out to me and I can get you plugged in. So so here's here's something that self-taught, okay? When you have a meeting with someone, let's say it's at um, Paradise Bakery or wherever it is, Starbucks, whatever, and you are going to line up back-to-back -back appointments, if you really, truly want to connect people, this is how you do it. Overlap those meetings by five minutes on purpose. So if I'm meeting with Cause at 9 a.m. at Paradise on Fort Union and I want Shayla to be there at 10, I'm going to say, listen, it's really important that you arrive at 9.55 because I'm going to be finishing my 9 a.m. meeting, but you have to meet this person. And so they come in, not, not pulling in the parking lot at 9.55. Like you've got to be at the table at 9.55. And then if I'm going to meet with TJ at 11, 
I'm going to have him overlap with my meeting with Shayla at 1055. And I sit there back to back meetings, 45 to 55 minutes apart. And I make connections for people all day long. I've been doing it for 20 years. And people love it. They're like, wow. It's I mean, I couldn't even tell you the dozens of stories of hundreds of thousands of dollars that have come as a result of that. Of people got, oh, you went to so-and-so high school. You know, this first turned into a personal conversation. I mean, people that are dating now, people that have gotten married that I've introduced that way. I mean, it's just amazing how when, you, when you're passionate about making connections for people, this is what happens. So I don't know if that serves you. But when, when we all open the world opens back up to normalcy and we're back to face to face, try that, do it and try it and overlap your appointments just for a quick five minute introduction and watch, watch the magic happen. It's, I just love it. And the thing I love most about it is nobody taught me that it's self taught just from experience. I just started doing it and great things happen. So bless you world. Thank you for having me on your show. Just so humbled. Oh, well, thank you very much for taking time out of your uh, busy schedule down there on the lake in Tennessee and joining all of us today. And I just want to remind us, stop selling. What? How can you say that? Stop selling and start connecting and serving. I believe if you will stop selling in the old school term of selling in the traditional way of sales, 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 this is what I do. This is my features and benefits and value connect people, care about people, serve people, and it will come back to you tenfold.